Breitling has one of the most exciting catalogs in the entire watch industry, and they're not getting the credit. Why? It's very easy. Let's talk about it. Boom, watch fan. Before we get into this video and all things Breitling, I want to remind you all that we are doing a Rolex giveaway when we hit 100,000 subscribers. It's very simple. All you got to do is subscribe to our channel, number one, and number two, sign up down below so we have all of your information and we can alert you if you do win. We're giving away a Rolex. It doesn't get more simple than this. Just go sign up. Today, I have coordinated my watch choice with my choice of subject. This is a... Uh, my nice sound, how crunchy that is. This is my father's Breitling Colt. He bought it back in, I, I think the early 2000s. Um, it was his most expensive watch purchase at the time, something like $2,000. These actually have maintained their value because they were done so well. Like Breitling executed this model of Colt like really, really well. The sizing, the coloring, um, the movement even, e everything about this watch is actually really great. Uh, I don't wear it enough, but in the summertime, the little pop of color, it's great. And of course, for today's subject, it is completely appropriate. Now, most of you out there, if you guys watch the channel, you know that I am really a dress watch guy. I talk about, you know, Patek Philippe Calatravas, I talk about, you know, Cartiers and things like that. But really what I'm interested in is is, is storytelling, right? What I'm really interested in is, is the history of these brands, um, uh, the quality of their products, yes, of course, but really how they are able to communicate um, their 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 qualities today. And, and that's what we focus on in this, you know, mini series that we do now and again. So, so first, um, let's talk about where Breitling is, both uh, in respect to products, in respect to marketing, and, and throughout I'll give my criticisms and ultimately, you know, I think we'll have a big, big takeaway here on the good and the bad. So, where is Breitling at the moment? Uh, Breitling is in the, you know, basically beginning of a complete overhaul. Um, when I say beginning, I mean in, you know, in the grand scheme. In 2017, George Kern took over Breitling as the CEO uh, and began the complete overhaul of the brand's image. What do I mean by complete overhaul? Well, that complete overhaul starts with the products themselves. Um, and, and, and by changing the products themselves, uh, Breitling began to, you know, retarget their end consumer. They went from a very blingy watch brand not so long ago, you know, pre-George Kern, not so long ago. Uh, think about all of the big, big Navitimers. Think about all of like the jewelry looking watches. The Breitling for Bentley. This is an entirely different target consumer and Kern uh, totally Totally changed, right? He totally recharted the, the, the path and, and immediately went back to the drawing board with vintage. The reference 675 chronograph and the uh, Super Ocean Heritage are two great examples of that. Breitling tapping into their historical catalog um, and going back to their roots and saying, this is our new identity. We are back uh, in the past. Now, my big problem with that, and I, and I think I've mentioned this in a video or two, um, is that a luxury manufacturer, right? a watch brand, let's say, that's charging more than $3,000 for watches, uh, a brand that really, you know, wants to be considered, you know, upper kind of crust, can't just rely on reissues, right? Now, reissues are a tactic. They are completely respectable. I have nothing wrong with reissues. I, in fact, love reissues, right? So many brands have done great ones. JLC, obviously AP, obviously Patek. Great brands do reissues, and Breitling's one of them. But a great brand cannot rely solely on reissues. Now, a brand like uh, Longines, for instance, uh, relies very, very heavily on reissues. And there's nothing wrong with that. Why? Because Longines knows their place in the market. Longines watches are largely around $2,000. So me as the consumer, I have no problem with that because Longines isn't trying to pretend to be this extremely innovative you know, manufacturer. They're saying, hey, we're gonna lean on our past, deliver a really cool product. You're not really paying for all that much you know, new design. Obviously, the more original of a design, uh, the more expensive the watch, right? The design process is extremely time consuming and expensive. So uh, Longines understands their place in the market and I love that. But a a brand like Breitling, a brand that is at a minimum, uh, oftentimes double, triple the price of Longines, they can't rely solely on, on originality. It's a tactic, but it can't be complete. Uh, now, Breitling 
not necessarily they took the advice from me, but Breitling had the same opinion that I had. Breitling has come out and released uh, new pieces. Breitling revived their chronomat. They didn't just reissue. They didn't just take from the past. They 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 reinvented. They reimagined this this historical model. How about their professional line? Professional line, which is now uh, pre-orderable on their website. I haven't even seen them in the flesh yet. Uh, this is a this is a line that they're really putting a lot of time behind. Um, and we'll get into their marketing in a second. And and the professional line is really one of the places that they're that they're focusing. Um, this is original. It's in modern Breitling spirit, but it is new. It's fresh. Um, obviously, it's within the theme of all these super bright and you know bright colors that seems to be very popular right now. Um, I'm a big fan of bright colors. I actually think it's it's a it's a blast. I think we should all not take ourselves too seriously. The OPs, Doxa, you're seeing it all over. Of course, you go back into you know watch history and you look at Rolex's Stella models. Those are bright colors. It's just fun, very individual. Uh, so so you you are seeing Breitling do their own thing. You're seeing Breitling actually create, not just repurpose. So I think that their collection, the watches themselves, are headed in the right direction. I'm actually really pleased with this. But now here we go on to the marketing segment. Um, I, I, I dug deep into their into their Instagram, I dug into their YouTube, and I dug into the partnerships that they pay for, and I'm sure with quite a bit of money, um, with the major you know watch publications you know throughout the, the, the market. Let's start off with Instagram. Breitling's Instagram isn't good enough. It's pretty, nothing wrong with that. Uh, it really shows off the watches pretty well, but it lacks any truly meaningful content. Why? Because Breitling isn't creating meaningful content elsewhere, they don't have the opportunity to even distribute it on Instagram. So again, the Instagram is clean, whoever you know is organizing it and doing the photos, they're doing a nice job, but just showing the watches is just the beginning. Right? It's not enough to develop an actually you know, dynamic, effective marketing plan, which is extremely meaningful for Breitling as a brand that is trying to totally reposition and kind of rebrand and reinvent themselves. It's more important for them than it is for other brands uh, even who are just doing the same thing, right? Breitling is actually trying to uh, create a new impression in the public uh, and just showing the watches isn't enough. So now let's get into the YouTube. Just two weeks ago, Breitling released a really interesting video. It was a webcast to launch their new uh, endurance professional collection, which like I said before, I, I'm actually a really big fan of, but it wasn't just a webcast. Breitling actually did a great job. There was there was a beautiful long intro uh, that really painted George Kern in this super positive, friendly light, just super likable. And the video itself caught the, I think the essence of what the Breitling brand is now going to represent. And what this summit made most clear to me, and this was really exciting, because this is this is really rare that you have an executive that actually understands this part of the business. Uh, it made it clear to me that George Kern genuinely understands uh, the importance of. Uh, of, of not just rebranding your collection, but rebranding your, your, your digital, right? Actually changing the way the brand communicates with the world. So I see the intention and I see the opportunity, but those two things aren't connecting because their partners aren't doing it for them. Their partners are doing as little work as they possibly can period end, right? Which is kind of human nature. They're delivering, you know, super down the middle, you know, milk toast, fact-based spec sheets, uh, reviews that while raising, are raising awareness, aren't selling anything. Now, I'm absolutely not saying that awareness is meaningless. That's obviously not true. But by using the same tactics on all of your campaigns with the watch blogs, you are reaching the same people in the same way. It's redundant and it's beneath you. The consumer, the watch community, is more discerning, not just in product, for which Breitling is doing a good job, but in how they're being spoken to, how the product is being sold. And watch blogs, like anyone else, which watch blogs aren't just these horrible organizations, everyone would prefer to not work harder for the same amount of money. It, it's easy to write a spec sheet and a small review. Uh, oh, the watch is a little bit thick. Oh, the, the material is interesting. Oh, I love the typeface. Oh, I think it's really cool that they're working with Matt Damon. So why do these blogs insist on selling awareness alone as a product to brands? like Breitling because it's easier. It's far easier to put together a spec-based, fairly sterile review of a watch. It's far harder to create a piece of content that actually resonates with people. Now, all brands are in many ways capable of it to one you know, respect or another. And if they don't have anybody in-house, which is quite likely, they can just outsource it, right? Everyone has that capability. But look at it from the watch blog's point of view. 
Why would I work harder for your money when I can work easier? And that's the exact trap that Breitling is falling into. Breitling has revamped their entire collection. They're doing a great job. And it was clear to me from watching the video with George Kern uh, on YouTube that he, as the leader of the company, the captain of the ship, the CEO, is extremely open to being on social, to actually reinventing the perception of the brand. But the people, the blogs, that are supposedly helping them, you know, execute this relaunch, aren't really doing it. And here's the shame. This is what really makes me sick. Brightling is easy to market. Right? As, as a marketer, as a storyteller, you look at the Breitling collection, whether that's the Navitimer, the Professional, the Avenger, the Super Ocean, and, and you can't help but to feel all of the potential uh, in storytelling. These are collections that actually are emotive. Uh, these are collections that are exciting, they're for explorers, whether that's in the depths of the ocean or, or fighting in a goddamn you know fighter jet. Those are exciting stories to tell and no one's telling them why. It's easier to talk about specs. Today, as a marketer, uh, marketing for Breitling is about as close as you can come to marketing for Rolex in the 1950s, back when Rolex was out there, roots of exploration. Now Rolex is a very conservative marketer. They'll just slap their name on, you know, on a, on a sporting event and awareness is enough. That's Rolex, right? That, that, you know, Rolex doesn't make the rule, right? Rolex is the exception to the rule. But why? Because they spend so long actually storytelling, right? So for everyone else, that's what you need to do. You need to put in the work and the messaging, recreate this connection with the consumer by using consistent, honest, and impactful messaging. Again, uh, specs, spec sheets, little reviews. This stuff isn't enough. Anyone that is working on storytelling for Breitling today, anyone that is responsible for communicating, you know, the message of that company has no excuse for not just destroying it, for not just doing this incredible job because all of the raw material is there, right? As a marketer, that's all you can ask for. That's all the brand can do for you. It's your job to do the rest, but the checks keep coming, the blogs keep resting on their laurels and Breitling, no matter how many great watches that they produce, will be, while getting better, never uh, increasing at the rate in which they could if, if they actually uh, use storytelling, if they actually tried uh, these, not new, but new to this industry tactics. So Breitling, if you're watching this, give me a call. I have some outstanding ideas. We can execute them very quickly and yeah, we do outwork our competition. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. This was great. I have a really good feeling you're gonna see a partnership with Breitling after this in, in the next quarter or two, uh, hopefully, hopefully even before then. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to our channel. Uh, and don't forget, we're giving away a Rolex. Sorry, Breitling had to, yeah. <laughs> we're giving away a Rolex when we hit 100,000 subscribers. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and sign up to the giveaway form down below. Again, giving away a Rolex, it doesn't get easier. Just sign up, subscribe, and uh, maybe you'll win. See you guys soon.